Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm here to talk about all of the books that I read in October. <laughs> Okay, so I actually read 16 books in the month of October. Nine of these books were audiobooks. Two were physical reads, like I physically read them as a book, like one of those. And then five of them were ebooks. I read them off of my Kindle. Now I normally do my wrap-ups. I start with my least favorite and then I go towards my favorite towards the end and that's kind of what we're gonna do for this <laughs> video. I read a few series. So I have to group those together. I just have different groupings for certain books. So I don't know how to categorize the way I'm listing these books. It makes sense in my little crazy brain. I'm just gonna list them off for you. They're not in the order that I read them, but they're also not in the order of least favorite to favorite, if that makes sense. I'm just gonna get started. <laughs> okay, so the first books I'm gonna talk about today are uh, books that I read in a reading vlog that I just posted on Friday. There are five books. I read the top five most rated books on my Goodreads TBR. Um, so I'm just gonna list those off for y'all. If you want to know my in-depth thoughts about these books, be sure to go check out that reading vlog. It's me real-time reading every single one of these books. I did DNF one though, so I don't have a full review on my thoughts for one of them. I think my favorite read of the uh, month, maybe the year, um, The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is an amazing romance book. I understand where all of the hype is coming from. So this book is about our main character, a woman named Kala, and she decides to fly to Alaska because she realizes that her very estranged father is ill and he lives in Alaska and she hasn't seen him since she was two years old so she decides to go to Alaska to visit him and he owns his own flying plane company there as well and there she meets Jonah who is one of the pilots for her father's company and um, it's a hate to love they instantly hate each other and this book isn't just about romance it's about Kala's relationship with her father which made it even even better uh, you can see in the reading vlog that um this book wrecked me a lot cried a lot this book is flipping amazing and i totally recommend it i cannot wait for the second book to come out very very soon the next book on this list is two worlds collided by karen michelle nutt i dnf'd this one this is the book that i dnf'd and this is a time travel romance story i believe that's all you remember about it if you want to know why i dnf'd it be sure to go check out that reading vlog next book we have returning his favor by jacqueline francis this is a romance book about an ex-Amish man and a plus-size heroine main character. I was really looking forward to this one because it seemed really interesting to me. It looked really good and I was really excited for it because I've never read a book about an ex-Amish person before, especially a romance book about it. So I was really looking forward to this, but unfortunately this let me down. Um, I go into more detail as to why it let me down in that reading vlog. I gave this book a two out of five stars. The next one on this list is The Gravity of Us by Brittany C. Cherry. I gave this book a five out of five stars. I don't know why I was so surprised, but I was so surprised that I love this book. I recommend going blind to this book because I did and it just made it 100% better for me. A way better reading experience going to this one blind because I knew nothing going into it and I'm so glad that I did. The little tagline on the front cover that I read that I think that is okay for people to know is it's about a girl who basically wears her heart on her sleeve and she loves to talk about feelings, loves to express herself, and the love interest in this book is a man who keeps everything inside and doesn't show his emotions at all and it's their relationship and it is so stinking good. Like I know what everybody's talking about now with Brittany C. Cherry, like her writing is Fan freaking tastic. I am so excited to read more of her books. And the fifth and final book in this grouping, we have Neat by Candy Steiner. These are about two main characters who work in a distillery, but they're from two long feuding families. So it's Romeo and Juliet esque, kind of. Our male main character has OCD. He's very neat, clean, likes things the way that they are. Our woman main character, she is an artist. She wants to open her own art studio. She has a septum piercing. She has ripped clothes. She's just like a free spirit kind of. So kind of like opposites attract in this book. I really, really, really enjoyed this one. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. 
my only issue is that the romance happened a little bit too quickly for my taste. I wanted more before they actually got together, if that makes sense, hopefully. But other than that, I really, really, really enjoyed this book and I totally recommend. Next, we have one of my least rated books on this list. We have Scoring Wilder by R.S. Gray. Now, I picked this book up because I read two R.S. Gray books in September and I really enjoyed both of them, so I thought I would start with her backlist titles. Like, this is the first book that she published, I believe. This one, unfortunately, was a miss for me. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Like, I didn't not like it, but I don't remember all that much about it and I do have some critiques about this book. This is about a woman who was a freshman in college or it's the summer before she's about to be a freshman in college and she's a really big soccer superstar and she has a relationship, a secret relationship with her assistant coach who is a really big soccer star in professional soccer and he's her assistant coach and they form a relationship together that is obviously forbidden and they have to secretly have a relationship together. This sounded really good to me. Like that sounded like a great premise for a book. Unfortunately, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. The main problem that I had was there's only the woman's perspective in this book when I wanted the man's perspective. Like the ending would have been way better if we had the man's perspective. And also this book I think was way too long. There could have been some things that could have been cut from the book. I did listen to this on the Audible Romance Package. I believe all of R.S. Gray books are on the Audible Romance Package. Um, so if you want to check this out and you have the Audible Romance Package, here you go. I say give it a shot. It may just be me and my personal taste of what I like in books. But other than that, I thought it was a okay book. Gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. Wasn't bad, but it wasn't really all that memorable to me, if that makes sense. Next, I had a reread. I reread Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. I feel like I haven't talked about Harry Potter on my booktube channel at Oh, like I haven't. I don't know why. I guess it just slips my brain sometimes, but this is my old copy from elementary school and it is almost falling apart at the seams. <laughs> but I didn't physically read this this time. I listened to the audiobook. I had the audiobook off of Audible. I bought it the first time that I listened to it. I was actually waiting for a certain book to come in from Libby and I, I listened to an audiobook every single day when I commute, so I had nothing to listen to, so I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna re-listen to this old gem because I was also re-watching all of the movies at the time, just watching them on repeat. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna listen to the book. Gave it five out of five stars for sure. I love this world and I need to read the illustrated editions. I have all of them and I've read, I believe, the first illustrated edition, but I still have to read the next three. So I'm super excited. I just got the Goblet of Fire illustrated edition and that is my favorite book in the series. I'm excited and this was such a great wonderful reread for me. Next we have Playing for Keeps by Kendall Ryan. I read this one off of the Audible Romance Package. This is a romance book, a forbidden romance involving hockey. This is a forbidden relationship because it is about our male main character trying to get with his best friend's little sister that he's known for forever and she's always had a secret crush on him I think and then I think he's developing his feelings or they've always secretly liked each other I don't honestly remember because I don't really remember anything about this book I'm sorry I ended up giving this three out of five stars because I remember nothing about this book like nothing at all except what I just said about the summary I don't remember the ending I don't remember anything so this was kind of a miss for me but if you want to shoot your shot and try it out go ahead it's on the audible romance package next one we have is ice planet honeymoon Rahash and Liz's Story by Ruby Dixon. This is number 2.5 in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. Ruby Dixon is going back and making novellas for honeymoons, I believe, for each couple. I loved this. I gave this a four out of five stars. I enjoyed this way more than Georgie and Vectal's romance honeymoon story. I think I gave that one three stars. I loved this one way more. I love Liz and Rahash's banter so much. Oh my gosh, if you don't know what the Ice Planet Barbarians is about, I haven't actually talked about Ice Planet Barbarians for a while. It is an alien romance series. These earth women get crash landed onto this ice planet and the only inhabitants of this planet are blue big aliens who mate for life basically. They have this like symbiote in their body that'll indicate to them when their lifelong mate and partner is near and so all of these women get mated to these alien men. So this is a little novella that takes place after a main book about a main couple 
and their honeymoon story, what happens after they get mated. I love this series. I will always read a book about the Ice Queen Barbarian series. Like I'm going to read it no matter what. I loved this. Their banter was amazing. The steamy scenes were amazing. The only reason why I didn't give it five stars is because it was way too short and I needed more. <laughs> oh, and this is on Kindle Unlimited if you wanna read it. I believe that all of the Ice Planet Barbarians are on Kindle Unlimited. Next we have a very well-loved book in the romance community. We have A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone. This is book number one in Thorn Chapel series. This is kind of like a mistake mysterious romance book. So this is about six main characters and back when they were kids they all vacationed in this very eerie mansion estate. This takes place years later after they have all become estranged and they've basically all gone their separate ways and they all end up meeting at this mansion again for a reason you will figure out in the book. The estate and the mansion might have powers in it. It's a very mystical feeling. Every person in this book is in the LGBTQ plus community and it's like all of their inner relationships working together. It is very steamy, very well written. Like Sierra Simone, her writing style is whimsical and elegant to read about. I really enjoyed her writing style. The only reason why I could not give this five stars is because I don't know why, this just took me a long time to get through. I couldn't remember certain things because it took me so long to read. So maybe I will reread it and maybe up my rating. I'm not sure, but right now this is, sits at a four stars for me. There is a second book out right now, but I have heard very mixed things about the second one where people who loved this one hated the second one. So I need y'all's opinion. Please let me know down in the comments below if I should read the second book in this series because this ended on a point where I wanted to read the next book, but people are saying that the next book is bad. So I need your opinion on whether or not I need to read the next book in this series, please. The next three books are in a series and that is called The Walls Series by Jail Berg. The first one is called Within These Walls. I originally listened to this book through the Audible Romance Package and I loved it so much that I had to purchase a physical copy. I needed it in my collection. This is about our main character named Lila and she has a terminal heart defect. She has spent her whole life in hospitals and spent her whole life being caged basically in her home by her mother because her mother is petrified of her getting sick or getting worse than she is and Layla's never lived outside of her home or a hospital room. When she's at the hospital for one of her visits she meets a man named Jude and he is going through a lot at the moment. He's going through grief, trauma. Jude is her like night call nurse and they form a friendship and a bond because she, Layla doesn't have any friends because she lives with her mother in a hospital room. She basically has nobody. So Jude basically becomes her first friend, like best friend and maybe it grows into something more. I first originally gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars but I think about this book literally all of the time that I'm going to maybe up it to a five because it's so good. I really, really love this book. Their relationship is so great and what they have to go through is a lot. This is a great read. I totally recommend it. If you have the Audible Romance Package, please check this book out. It is so stinking good. I need more people to read it. So then I read the next book in this series, which is Beyond These Walls. This is the second book revolving around Layla and Jude. The first book ended in a great point. Like there didn't need to be a second book, but it was a very welcome surprise for there to be a second book. Like you didn't, there didn't need to be one, but I liked that there was one. The characters go through some other things in this book. I gave this one a four out of five stars and I'm gonna keep it there um, because some things happen in this book that I didn't feel like we're needed, but I love these characters so much that I gave it a four out of five stars. This one is also on the Audible Romance Package, so when you get to the first one, you can immediately go to the second one. <laughs> and then the third book in this series is Behind Closed Doors. This one is about Jude's older brother. I give this one three out of five stars. It deals with some things that I don't really like to read about. There is an aspect of cheating in this book which I don't like to read about cheating. Um, I very rarely find a book where I find cheating to be okay. In this book, the cheating was not 
okay. <laughs> this is an a forbidden office romance. He is a big honcho boss and the woman in this book is his personal assistant. You don't need to read the other two books to read this one. Lila and Jude aren't really present at all in this one. You might be spoiled a little bit if you want to read the first two. You might be spoiled if you read this one because they do pop up maybe like once. But yeah, I did not enjoy this one as much as the first books in the series. The next three and the last three books on this wrap up are a part of a series, which you're all probably not surprised I'm gonna talk about. We have the next three books in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series by J.R. Ward. In October, I read Lover Unleashed, which is book number nine in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, and I give this one a five out of five stars. Next, number 10 in the series is Lover Reborn, and I give this one four out of five stars. This was not my favorite in the series for sure, but I enjoyed my time reading it just because it had some side characters who are my favorite in the series. The main couple though was not my favorite, unfortunately. And the last Black Dagger Brotherhood book that I read in October is Lover at Last. This one has gay representation in it. I give this one five out of five stars. This one is so stinking good. <laughs> I also listened to this one through Libby, through my library, and then I listened to this one through Audible. I got it off of Audible, I had a credit, and then I also listened to this one through Libby as well. If you didn't know about the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, this is an urban fantasy vampire romance series. Basically vampires have their own secret society in the world. It's them fighting evil people and being just sex gods. <laughs> They're so good, so good. Each book is about a different couple, but you get every single side character in every book basically, which is fantastic. There are so many different side storylines in every single book that it is so good. Today there was a couple in book number 11. Well, they're also in book number nine and book number 10. Like they grow throughout all of these books, even though their own personal book isn't until book 11. If you're into vampires, if you're into romance, please, please, please read these books. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of October. Please let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, I would love to know and talk to you about them in the comment section down below. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching and I will see y'all soon in the next one. Bye. Thank you.